have a <laughs> this amazing fan who literally gave us each a gift card that she reloads like 20 oh, 30 days at a time on starbucks it's so far <laughs> and so uh i've just been rinsing that as much as possible wait no, so she like she just reloads it for you like every so often yeah, the second it's empty yeah. she's like sends us a screenshot it's like reload it yeah, yeah. that's yeah. sick like, dude it's like the like the bottomless pit of starbucks it really is i was gonna say like it's like a like a starbucks sponsorship almost but without starbucks being involved <laughs> It's our sugar mom. Did, did yeah. The yeah. 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 We talked to her for a bit. She yeah. flies out to a ton of our shows. She's the best. Dude, that's sick. Um, real quick, do you guys want to just introduce yourselves real quick for anybody watching and not for super familiar with the band? Yeah. Sure. I'm Beepus. I'm Coley. I'm Bardo. And we're the Beauty, Beauty School, School Dropout. Dropout. Holy <laughs> fuck! It's almost <laughs> like you planned that. Yeah, yeah. We'll, talk, we'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> there it was. That, how are we going to top that, man? We can't. <laughs> so, so you know, I was having my uh, my weekly viewing of the Harry Styles music video, Watermelon Sugar, like I do every Monday morning. You know, I get up, I put it on. And I noticed Coley is in the music video. Is that right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. That's right. Dude, that how? Was, uh, Why? <laughs> uh... I got casted for it the night before. I just I used to work in a lot of like film and music video production, and so I knew a bunch yeah. of casting director, directors. And I got picked out like the night before, and they kind of lured me in. They're like, "Yeah, like Harry loves your look. They're gonna like you know, it's a happy yeah. shoot, quick, no problem, whatever." I was there from like seven a.m. till pff, I think like eight p.m. in a pink speedo in a casting <laughs> crew of probably like a hundred and fifty people. And I was just like, <laughs> "Jesus, oh." But, well, luckily uh, yeah. you look great in a pink speedo, man. Worked out well. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm hoping that someday I can get Harry in one and, and bring it back full circle. I think I, I think that'd be great. Do fans ever like bring that shit up or like notice that at all? Even yeah. all the time. Yeah. I'm actually surprised how like it doesn't happen more though. I know I I could see how it would be more of a thing, but I think at the time my hair was a little bit straighter and like I don't, I don't know. I you got way less tattoos too. I I almost didn't catch it. <laughs> I've been running. That's pretty cool. My identity sense. I mean, you're, you're literally in the thumbnail. I'm like, in, yeah. bro. I'm on the vinyl. That's the <laughs> literal vinyl that is put out really? everywhere. It's the picture that's the thumbnail. Gotta, we gotta buy a vinyl. Though. Yeah, we need to buy. Oh, God, you you that's classic. amazing. Yeah, you should definitely so, get that. Yeah, just like really foster that Harry Styles relationship. I think that could be good for you guys. I think. Honestly, I think it would be a great tour. I like not even joking with this new era yeah. of BSD. I feel like it would be very uh, aligned. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, speaking of touring, man, you guys just got done doing the Blink-182 Arena Tour. I got to catch your set in Cleveland, which is fantastic. I was super excited. I, I thought I was not going to be able to make it in time for your set, but thankfully I got there in time. We were uh, so it was scared. killer, man. I had a great time. Thank you what so was much. Like, what was that tour like? Incredible. Surreal. Crazy. I think yeah. the coolest part about it is that A, Turnstile and Blink are like some of our favorite bands of all time. So that's just cool mm -hmm. from like a life goal aspect but mm -hmm. also just like how easy and like fun the whole tour was there was like no stress the only stress was like day one not having played in an arena before but besides that yeah it was like the smoothest most like intentional tour like that that camp runs so smooth that you, it just made it so easy for us to just go in and play we're done and we get to right. just hang out with music you kind of have to operate at a certain level when you're playing that big of arenas and that big of venues. And so uh, it definitely makes it easy for bands like us to get thrown into it when they have the operation going that they do. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, you guys put your first song out in, like, 2020, right? Yeah. 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 So that's not a long gap between like playing clubs and playing fucking arenas. Like that's a was that like a tough transition? Because even like the stage is bigger. Obviously the crowd's bigger. Like is that hard to like? Because you're used to like being cl up close to people and rocking out, and now you're like you know, real far from people. Like, was that a hard yeah. adjustment? That was surreal. I mean, dude, the trajectory was literally in May of what 2021. Yeah, our first show was after hours at a thrift shop. Our homies. Oh, nice. Thrift shop called and punk as fuck just flooded the floor with beer. It was just, you know, yeah. super, super grungy. Two years, almost on the dock, we played Madison's Square Garden with Blink. And it's like, a jump like that was kind of surreal for us because it was like, okay, we're building up, building up like 500 cap rooms, 1,000 cap rooms, 2,000 cap rooms, and then all of a sudden 20,000 person arena. 
and we kind of had to learn how to absorb an audience in that way. And it's like, oh, you yeah. Have, you know, thought you're 200 people in front in the pit and then a black abyss of just like yeah. nothing there. you can't see anybody so it was kind of like honestly at a certain point i kind of got in the mindset of like we're just rehearsing right now i'm just jamming with the boys up here and yeah no one, no, one's here. no one can watch no one can see us to, i can't see anybody to paint a picture too like we have only been playing shows what for like Mm, two two and a half years now but that whole trajectory like the from 300 caps to 2500 caps to 25,000 caps happened in the span of like the last eight months so like before that we were only doing club and yeah and it wasn't necessarily like this gradual incline where you're like oh, okay cool we're like getting to learn each time it was like all of a sudden we hit this stride where it's just like okay cool you're forced in this position where you're like you yeah have to yeah i grew up real fast <laughs> yeah totally. so it's kind of weird like when we did hit that stride because it was just like all right you get thrown in head first and it's like there's no yeah. we're very fortunate to have a team that supports us and and understands the rankings of touring on this level um mm -hmm. and i think they also conditioned us a lot beforehand and let us know what was up because honestly had they not had it not been the team we had, I think there would have been a lot of harder lessons to oh, yeah. have been learned going right. into it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you guys obviously have some huge cosigns with, you know, Mark Hoppus and Pete Wentz. I mean, that's, you know, some, some little no names in the, the pop punk world. You know, like, how, does, like, how do you even get on their radar to begin with? Hey, you can throw Rob Thomas on that checklist. Now, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you guys, didn't you guys play with Matchbox 20 like the other day or something? Yeah, two days ago Tampa, we opened for Matchbox 20 and we got the Daddy Rob Thomas cosign. Dude, that's that might be the, the pinnacle, man. <laughs> so far. They're they're all so great, man. Like we're very fortunate to be in the position we're in. We're super grateful to be here. And like it's been a it's so funny because this whole thing feels written in the stars. I mean, obviously we've had to say no to a lot and we've really eaten the shit to get here, but uh in due time, everything kind of pulls itself together, and we've just been fortunate enough to come across the likes of Mark and you know the Robs and the Pete's of the world, and they support. Yeah. It. Yeah. Has cool. there been one single moment that's been like a for e either one or any one of you like that's been like the one single like holy shit I can't believe this is real life kind of moment? Mine was the first one that really happened was yeah, be best. we had uh, we had lunch with Mark Hoppus, and then a week later we had lunch with. Pete, and this was like before we were <laughs> on tour. tour with Mark. What did they order? Oh, 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 oh! oh. <laughs> I forgot about an even crazier. I, I knew Beba's moment because no. he came in the green room just okay. peeing his pants. Yeah, okay. Like... This was the best moment of my entire life. Uh, I was walking by Mark's green room, and his wife Sky sees me, and she goes, "Come in," and I'm like, "Of course." I walk right in, <laughs> and it, it's Josh Dunn, Debbie Ryan, Mark, and Sky, and like I'm just hanging out. They're like, "Come hang out, sit down with us." And I'm like already just so jonesed right now. And then yeah. Tom walks in and Tom literally pulls Mark aside and then they pull Josh aside and then they're like, oh, Beepus, you can come hang out with us too in like a separate corner. And so it was just me, Josh, Tom, and Mark. And we just Jesus. hung out and stopped it for like 30, 45 minutes. Best moment of my life. <laughs> Hands down. That'd be hard to top. <laughs> I, I don't normally get nervous meeting people of influence anymore but yeah. i was so yeah. nervous bro i think mine was when uh, tom was like walking at us this was like the last day of tour mind you we've said hi to tom maybe like two or three yeah. separate occasions what do you say he was like walking towards us and he just looks dead ass at us in the eyes and he goes don't look at me don't look at me <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me in the eyes. Don't look at me. In the eyes. We're like, thank you so much for having us. He's like, don't look at me. Don't look at me. In the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's it's pretty Dude. weird. It's like, I think the weirdest thing is like I've said this before, but it's like how in these moments it doesn't feel you like don't it doesn't feel weird in the moment. And yeah. You think about what you're doing. You're like, it's kind of weird that I'm not freaking out right now. You know what I mean? Because it's just like it's yeah. like that slow. And then all of a sudden, suddenly, these people you've looked up to your whole life become friends. And then it's like, it's just like, oh yeah, we're here. We're rock stars, yeah. man. There's always another carrot. There's always another carrot to chase. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. I think in the moment you kind of have to take yourself out of it and not be like, holy shit, because yeah, you will overthink it and you'll just get in your own head. So you kind of just kind of live in the moment. And then you know, a week later, you can be like, 
Wow, I hung out time too long. What the fuck? Why didn't I ask him about take off your pants and jacket? What was I thinking? <laughs> yeah. yeah, for real. It's pretty wild. Um, so you guys really know the whole 2000s emo pop punk sound, obviously, but like not in like a kind of like a rehash boring way. Like you guys really, you know, put your own spin on it. And I just, you know, I love what you're doing, but I want to know like what were like the bands that besides Blink that you grew up listening to? What were the big influences for you guys? Oh, there's so many. Yeah, yeah can we each pick three? Yeah, yeah. we need to each pick three. That's there you go. Bring Me the Horizon, My Chem, and Green Day would all be my three. Nice. Deftones, ooh, Motley Crue, and oh man, I'm stuck. I, I want to say Alice in Chains. Just the whole 90s grunge era was basically. There you go, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Strokes, Nirvana, and Green Day. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, so not not a ton of 2000s emo pop punk in there, even though that's kind of the sound you guys have going on. It's yeah, pretty cool. It's, it's funny. I think we get that a lot. Like people say, they we have like, oh, you guys are so pop punk, and it's like funny. Is I don't think we've ever described ourselves as that, or ever like shot. For yeah, that. I right. think we get those cosines a lot, and obviously pop punk is having this big resurgence right now. Mm-hmm. I think for us, we just want to write good songs and make them heavy. You know, we often try mm-hmm. to like literally in sessions, we're like, we want to write a song that sounds like Justin Bieber could sing acoustic. And then yeah. we just make it heavy. Like our song Assassin, that was quite literally the reference for that song. For real. Um, and I think it's just, you know, we're always trying to reinvent ourselves. And honestly, in this next project that we're working on right now, it's like pushing that forward. We, we don't want to be nostalgic. We really want to be forward thinking. Future mm-hmm. nostalgia. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of nostalgia, have you guys heard the uh, cover by uh, uh, Falling in Reverse, the Last Resort Papa Roach cover yet? Uh, yeah, it's yeah. so extra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder what your thoughts are on it. Bro! Oh, throw us in the fire. You know what? <laughs> this is a tough one because, to be honest, I grew up loving Escape the Fate and Ronnie Radke. Mm-hmm. I followed the whole lore. I have been such a fan. And I just, yeah, I don't know. It's not my favorite. To be, yeah, I'm, it's cool. I see the, I see the allure, and I also understand yeah. fully why he's like fucking crushing it. Like he really is. Oh um, yeah. But it's definitely, I think, for a different demographic than us three, yeah. maybe. I also just love Last right Resort so much. Yeah, that song is so yeah. good. You just don't want anybody to touch it. It's just too good. <laughs> I don't think it can slow it down, and I don't know why yeah. they got. Like literally the entire CGI team of Transformers to make that music video. Dude, this, he spares right. no expense on music videos. That's for oh, sure. No, I, that was like the. I mean, I've never seen a music video. It's like what? That's <laughs> that's the shit that I'm like. Okay, I get it. Like, bro, you, bro's just on a whole nother level of like. Yeah. You know, the ceiling doesn't exist. He can do whatever he right. wants. Right. I genuinely wish that they would, and I doubt this will ever. Actually, I have no idea. But like that first album that they put out that had like. Um, oh god really the entire first album was just genius in my opinion I wish they would go back towards that sound because that was the shit that like really got me Yeah, just like so hooked but I mean honestly I want to put out a cover and have this many people talking about it so. yeah exactly it's right. like yeah. the other genius part of it it's like he knows he's the villain in the scene or like oh, he yeah. is the villain in the scene and he like leans into that in a way that's like honestly pretty fucking genius yeah, yeah pretty- you gotta have a heel there. What's yeah. that? His, his vocals are so nasty. Like, straight yeah. pop. it's no lack of talent. It's just, I think, a taste thing for us that we don't like it. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea. Not everyone loves the Beatles, you know? Um, what are you going to so, yeah, so yeah, roast? Yeah. Everybody loves the Beatles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's I'm going to clip this out and, and tag Ronnie Radke and, like, oh, musical dropout thinks you're an idiot. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get roasted on TikTok next. We're like, oh, sweet. He puts a hit on us. <laughs> yeah. I, I uh, I actually tweeted one time. I was like, "Rumor has it, if you stand in the mirror and tweet Ronnie Radke's name three times, he'll come out and roast you." And <laughs> Ronnie Radke commented on it, and he's like, "Yeah, but I like you. It's all good." <laughs> I'm like, "Damn, dude!" <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. Um, so tell me about this new track, "Beautiful Ways." You guys have been teasing the shit out of it on TikTok and Instagram. The clip sounds really cool. I like you know, I, I got the inside scoop. It sounds really cool, guys. But uh, Ooh, yeah, like- tell me a little bit about the song. It's a it's a fun one. It's a feel good for sure. I think like 
again, we just try and write as good a songs as possible, and I think there was just some magic in the room that day. Um, we did this one with Andrew Goldstein. Yes, who is, shout out Papa Goldstein. I mean, if you know goat. if you know Goldstein's work, you're like, oh, this guy's yeah, this guy's big. He does everybody, and so um, it was really cool working with him because we've all looked up to him for the longest time. When we did uh, Almost Famous, our song with Mark mm-hmm. Hoppus, um, with Goldstein, and so it was cool yeah. to get to revisit with him and, and come out with this one. But yeah, that was rad, and he is just like in love with the song, which just makes me even more stoked about it. Um, but yeah, honestly, it was just like this. The perfect way to describe this song is hopeless and horny. That's mm-hmm. good. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people can relate to that. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone, yeah. Everyone's a little hopeless and horny sometimes. <laughs> yeah. We, we can kind of go in depth with that, but take it for what it is. It's hopeless and horny. Yeah. yeah. Is this going to be a standalone single or part of a uh, record? So standalone working. single for an album that's coming out. Yeah. Gotcha. Very so cool. Yes. 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 <laughs> nice tease. <laughs> uh, so, you guys got some festivals lined up. You're doing Lala, right? In August, oh, yeah. and then oh, yes. Louder Than Life. And, and you, guys, you guys haven't done Lala Palooza yet, have you? No. None of, the, no. None of those. Yeah. This is our, I don't even yeah. think we've done US festivals. Have we've we? never played a U.S. festival before. As oh, musical right. drop. Um, yeah, Lala Palooza is our first one. We've done a lot of European festivals now. But, uh, yeah. Guest performances. And guest things. performances. Yeah. And also, we played as... Um, Royal and the Serpents band for like a bunch of festivals, um, but we've never okay. done a dropout festival, so we're well acquainted nice. with that. But yeah, yeah. So it's not uh, a new territory exactly. Like yeah, yeah. You've been on stage before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cause you, you guys yeah. did download, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. we did download. Rock for people. Reading and leads. Reading leads. Hurricane Southside. Um, and Summer then, Sad Fest. Summer Sad. Shout out La Sad. Have you ever heard of La Sad? Less sad? No, yeah, I don't think so. I've heard of Summer Sad Festival, but not Less Sad. Bro, Less Sad is this trio from Milan, and they are just like the most pop punk, like, how do you it's describe like, it? It's, it's like Juice World meets Blink 182. Meets MGK. Okay. Yes. But they're and fucking nuts. And they're, they're nuts. They're, they're real life so rock good. stars. And they're just Straight entertainers. Up. Like, they'll stop their set and do these, like, skits. <laughs> like, it's crazy. <laughs> Like different oh characters God. come out. They have like a priest come out and like bless the crowd and shit like that. And like this is whole what thing. The fuck? But it's all in Italian. And we, it was this festival yeah. that they put in Milan because they're massive in Milan and like in Italy. And but like they don't yeah. do English lyrics, so it's like no one outside of Italy really right. knows them. But they have they're big enough where they have their own festival called Summer Fa- Sad Fest. This in, was the first year they did it. This was the first fe- yeah the first time they've done it. It's like this packed festival and it was them headlining. Modson and us on the main stage. So it was like all our homies from LA there, and we're just like, where are we? First of all, no <laughs> and shit. Like, what are we doing? But they were so cool, so kind, and like we just literally all of us were standing on the side stage watching. They, they played for like two and a half hours. Yeah, they did. And dude. we watched the entire thing because we're like, we cannot take our eyes off of this. This is amazing. It was so yeah, funny. Yeah, because when you said summer <laughs> sad, I got confused with uh, sad summer in yeah. uh, America. Yes. Yeah, it's okay. Universe. Yeah. Yeah, damn! I have to check that. Less sad is the name. L A sad. L A sad. That's why I, I thought it was L A sad at first. I also thought it was L A sad, but then it was less sad. It's the sad. Yeah, that would that would work too if they come if they come here. People just call them L A sad. Yeah, Mod and I were like talking about like, oh my god, like these guys have to come to the states. They have to take all their songs, flip them in English. They do so well. Yeah, and then just like like it was so entertaining. They could pull a Tokyo Hotel, but for Italy. Bro, they literally, uh, well, I hope this is politically correct. Ish. They bring a midget on stage and <laughs> in a little referee suit, and he comes with yeah, like yeah. a ring bear case, and he pulls out yeah. three joints and gives them each a joint, and then he hits the yeah. timer and starts blowing a whistle, and they race to see who can smoke the joint the fastest. It's like in the <laughs> middle of the show. It's like a whole yeah. skit they do. And then a guy like comes, announces the winner, and then runs off stage. And then there's just this like little homie running around backstage for us tonight, and he's just like the oh my god, dude. It's awesome! It sounds like a pop punk tenacious D or something. <laughs> no, pretty, pretty much. much. Yeah, that's it. It's, yep. like, it's yeah. like theater. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, have you are you guys worried about playing these festivals and stuff? Are you worried about anyone throwing shit on you at you on stage? That seems to be a big uh, oh, bro, big trend right bro, now. 
I will throw it right back. I think we like, <laughs> we like getting the funny negative reactions out of people. I think yeah. like, it doesn't affect us in any way. I know some artists struggle with like negative feedback or like internet hate or even like shit getting thrown at them. But like for us, it's so funny. Like, we're like bring it on. Like you want to talk yeah. about us or make our short show more interesting because you're going to throw something like, I don't know. It's more exciting for us to have the negatives too. So long as it's not yeah. like a dangerous weapon, obviously yeah, that's yeah. if it's like knives. Well, yeah, that's, a- that's the thing. Like they're not even, these people aren't even throwing stuff at the performers out of anger. They're throwing, they, they, they're throwing shit at people they love. Like people are getting hit with like phones and stuff. Like take, please take a selfie. <laughs> you know, like it's crazy. Oh, yeah. if I man. Get hit- in the head with the phone, I'm definitely obliterating that thing on stage. <laughs> yeah. and watch. No problem. That would be funny. Yeah. yeah. People just don't know how to behave at concerts anymore, man. They just lost their damn minds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I played dodgeball half my life, you know? I'm ready. It's crazy, yeah. though, because it's not really you can a dodge a phone, thing. You like can dodge a ball, man. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's all just being was publicized. That? I was saying it's crazy because yeah. it's not that it's like a new thing. It's just getting attention now because of the internet. Like, I don't know. One of my, the craziest stories I read out of uh, Brian Welch's book was, I think it's called Save Me For Myself, but like he's talking about when corn was coming up in the new metal era and it was like mm-hmm. not, they were still on the fence of being this really cool thing, but a lot of people were like, yo, what the fuck is this? Like, I don't yeah, understand. Yeah. And there was one show they were playing at a, it was like one of their first big festivals and he like felt something whoosh by his head and he didn't even notice what it was. He thought it was maybe a bird. And like at the end of the set, there was an open switchblade stuck in his cab. And like, Jesus, he was just centimeters off from getting grazed by this knife. But it's like crazy to think that people will even rationalize doing shit like that. Yeah. Like, Somebody's trying to scalpel, man. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> don't want switch don't do that. Please. Yeah, don't bring a swish blade. Not yes. condoning this. Yes. <laughs> I, want, I need to keep my hair. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Nice. Are you uh, are you a big new metal fan? I am. Yeah. Uh, we all. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Nice. Is uh corn your favorite? Or do you have someone else locked and loaded? Corn's probably my favorite. Corn's definitely up there. Again, Deftones, I'd say, is still considerably like yeah. the early Deftones was that wave. But we like Slipknot. Yeah. We go to a knot fest. We, uh, Limp system of it, lip, yeah, system of it down. Is the shit. System of down so is good. unbeatable to me. Yeah. I love them. Yeah, you guys didn't get to go to Sick New World, did you? In no. Vegas? Oh, it looked man. sick. Uh, my dad went. <laughs> I right. think that, that was the recent one in Vegas, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, Limp Bizkit yeah. and... Uh, no, Olympus actually wasn't on that. They were like the only new metal band not on the on the bill. <laughs> I think Fred Durst oh, was sick God. when they were booking it or something. Yeah. He went on our behalf. Nice. I, nice. I, I saw your video where it's like they missed an opportunity to call it Sick and You World. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Like, what? <laughs> they, they called it N E W. Yeah, Why? That's a huge L. A huge L. Yeah. I don't know if, like, it made sense for a branding purpose or something. I don't know. I, don't, I can't wrap my head around it. It makes no sense. Because, like, it just seems like a pretty obvious, obvious name, right? <laughs> but I was talking though. Maybe they didn't want to make it too nostalgic. You know Maybe I mean? that's what it was. Yeah, I don't know. But that that whole uh, <laughs> that whole sect of Live Nation that's just like you know re, re, repurposing nostalgia festivals basically with like that when we were young, and then uh, they got a new one like this like a '80s new wave like with like Blue Monday and all those kind of bands on it. Um, it's, yeah, it's it's uh it's it's a nice little nice little racket they got worked out there. <laughs> it's what, smart. What's it's really... like your field of rock? What like where did you grow up in, and what did you come from, or what do you prefer listening to? So pop punk and emo, like well actually, so my favorite band of all time is Nirvana. Like I, that's what I grew up on was like grunge and shit, and uh, you know Metallica, a lot of like you know '80s rock and stuff too. Um, but then, uh, you know, as I started getting older, actually playing music and stuff, I, uh, really got into pop punk and emo. Like I was, you know, I grew up, I'm 35. So I grew up in like the, you know, the height of the 2000s, you know, explosion for emo yeah. and pop punk, you know, and I love new metal too. Cause like, so basically anything that was trendy in those eras, like when I was in high school, like I'm super, super nostalgic for, you know, Got it. but, uh, yeah. So yeah, definitely new metal and, uh, pop punk and emo were my, my jam, like in my adolescence. Uh, when I started like actually playing music and stuff, sweet. And yeah, so base, but now it's just like it's anything under the rock and metal umbrella, honestly. Yeah. Very cool. Sick. Yeah, we salute you. Oh, yeah. Uh, what's up? 
So we salute you for pushing the needle forward. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, are you guys actually big Grease fans, or is this name just fucking random? No, we're oh, yeah, all we're Grease, Grease fans. fans. Okay. All right. We all have like Dude. individual attachments to it too. Like really. Throughout our lives, yeah, like, there's, like, videos of me when I'm, like, five years old dancing on my buggy, singing Go Grease Lightning, and taking my <laughs> shirt off and whipping it around, and then Cole has attachments to it, Bardo has attachments to it. We all grew up watching it. It's nice. Class. Greek is class. Yeah. It's funny, though, because I feel like Grease was something that we kind of knew growing up, and I've mm-hmm. noticed there's some of our fans that don't know what Grease is. Oh, yeah. And it, Absolutely. They, like, that wasn't even, like, even, like... What, there wasn't there a remake of Greece or something like that? I don't like, even know. Later on, mm-hmm. but like I think so. I, basically, I think it just kind of was missed for some of the younger fans that we have, and so for them, they just like Beauty School Dropout is just a name of. And they're like, yeah. Oh, okay. And, which is kind of cool well, that like we could be that new thing for them. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I honestly, I saw I saw the movie for the first time like maybe five years ago. Like my wife showed it to me. She was a big fan. I had never seen it. I know. I never watched. I never like watched any of those like musicals when I was younger for whatever reason. I don't know why. I love them now when I'm older, but never watched them growing up. So yeah, even when I first became acquainted with your band, like I didn't immediately make the connection to Greece. And it took me a while. I'm like, oh yeah, that song. <laughs> so yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there. It's been super in our favor for older demographics. Like, even I imagine a lot of the, like, last crowd we just played in front of Matchbox, like, that kind of crowd usually are the people uh, who are yeah. like, Greece. And you're like, yeah, exactly. We, we make an ode yeah. to it at the end of every set. We have a Beauty weird, School trippy Dropout. version of Beauty School Dropout by Frankie Avalon. Oh, playing. no shit. That's how we end our set. We also don't like to do encores. So that's also yeah. our way of, like, just this is done. It's our off core. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> done core. Fuck it. Yeah. Done core. <laughs> uh, do you guys have anything like else you want to like kind of plug or tease here before we get out of here? Because I know like, I know you have a short time frame. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I want to make sure you get all your Ooh. promo in that you can. We have lots of shows coming up this yeah. year. On a house. pull up. Let us blow your brains. With a high I'm glad you said brains. <laughs> <laughs> with a high octane rock performance. <laughs> we got lots of merch on the way. We got lots of shows, festivals, tours, all the crazy shit you could imagine a band doing coming. Uh, We're gonna we got an album. An album. Um, should we? I don't know if we can tell the name yet. Should we? If you can guess, I don't think you're allowed to, but you should. <laughs> Should we say? It? It's called Ready to Eat. <laughs> yeah. 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 Dude, I'm leaking your... shit over here. I'm leaking information. Yeah. <laughs> You're yeah. the first person for to real. hear the name of the album. Yeah. Yeah, we yes. got an album called Ready to Eat coming, probably Q3, and it's about to be a fucking banger. Banger little tape. Hell yeah. No, it's different than anything we've ever made, and I think it's going to be really cool. Yeah, man. Send me the Dropbox link. Fucking leak that to me. <laughs> I love it, dude. Uh, before we bail, each one of you gotta give me if you can think of one. What's one song that would surprise people to be in your regular rotation? That we listen just to? Like, yeah, that you listen to in your regular cool. rotation, and people might be like, "Oh shit!" I know oh, that's a tough one on the spot. I got this. I religiously listen to "The Funeral" by Band of Horses. Oh, dude, that's a fantastic song. I love that track. And I, like, play it way more than a happy person should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's depressing as shit. Yeah, it is. I have this song, uh, Tizetta, by uh, Malatu Astaki, who's, like, an Ethiopian jazz artist, and I play that all the time when I'm alone or just, like, in <laughs> nature. <laughs> I is there, the- are there words, or is it just, <laughs> like, straight no. music? Yeah, it's just straight <laughs> music it it's sounds like relaxing of all time. yeah it's amazing it's so good <laughs> i listen to the entirety of golden hour by casey musgraves oh uh, okay okay so really does. yeah those are surprising cool. choices i like it yeah we're we're getting into the we're digging back the layers here of yeah, beautiful yeah. drop out like, <laughs> we love just so many different types of music i think people often yeah. think we just it's only i mean honestly mostly what i listen to is folk music it's kind of funny that we always get pop punk because we quite literally reference pop punk never. <laughs> yeah, like we're yeah. always 
We're always it's referencing least... hip hop. We love to reference hip hop and R and B and Skrillex and Skrillex. Skrillex is probably our most referenced artist. Nice. Bring it heavy yeah. shit. Like really heavy music too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we just dial it back. Yeah. Yeah, because like I don't like hear like a straight up pop punk in you guys. I hear more of like the like the emo flavor of pop punk, kind of like yeah, the yeah. I guess like emo side. Like I feel like yeah, I, definitely. I can't speak for Beavis, but I know Cole and I's favorite Blink songs are always like the emo ones, like Adam's song, dude. Or, like, Stay together for the kids. Oh, yes, you know, so good. I'm gonna say unpopular opinion. The best Blink album of all time is the Untitled album for me. I love that album so yeah, much, I man. Agree. I agree. That is easily the best one. Stockholm Syndrome is my favorite song, and it's off that. Oh album. god, so good. Is that an so unpopular good. opinion? I'm not. I think. I feel like, like, I mean, that song, that album is amazing. Feeling yeah, this. I miss so it. you need to like, check the Reddit, the Reddit forum. I guess if I guess who you talk to, like all the yeah. cool kids will tell you, uh, Dude Ranch is the best Blink One and Two album, or the fucking Cheshire Cat or something. If anyone says that, I don't believe them because that's like, yeah. that's like saying that Green Day's best album is Kerplunk, and it's yeah, like no. right. American Idiot or Dookie or Dookie. Either one's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I did this like I did this like game where like where you like uh, it was like this thing where they put bands above your head and you're supposed to pick one, and I chose Blink over Dead Kennedys on one of them, and people were like, oh my god, how can you choose Blink over Dead Kennedys? I'm like. How can I not? What the fuck yeah, are you smoking, heard, dude? Have you heard Blink-182? Yeah. They yeah, have. they're a million times better than the Dead Kennedys. Nothing against the Dead Kennedys, but come on. <laughs> yeah. I do love the Dead Kennedys. Yeah, but if you're choosing as, like, band over band, like, yeah. Dead yeah. Kennedys are cool, but Blink is yeah. amazing. Yeah, facts. Well, that's the thing. It, it comes down to, like, I think it's, like, the, it's the cool choice, you know? It's the cool choice like to say Dead Kennedys. Because from, cause they were, like, the punk world versus, like, the yeah. pop punk world are two just night and day different. Culture. oh yeah yeah i just like songs so much mm-hmm. yeah yeah and punk kids don't want to recognize pop punk as anything close to being punk it's like no that's just pop music you yeah know? <laughs> straight up yeah it's pretty funny uh, gatekeepers everywhere. um <laughs> right so uh where can uh where can everyone connect with you guys at and find you at on socials instagram is bsd.wave tiktok is beauty.school.dropout Twitter is BSD underscore wave. But in threads now. I was going to say, thing. yeah. Threads is the same as Instagram. So yeah, find yeah. out on Instagram. Hit our little number. Yep. Are you guys Are you guys threading? Have you guys oh, started threading yet? Threading. We've been threading I actually kinda, so hard. I like it. It's kinda cool. so, so. I like it. Wait, I do too. I'm ready to, to delete my Twitter, literally. I am over it. Dude. I do the unhingedness of Twitter, so I'm trying to like be as unhinged <laughs> as possible. You know, this is the thing. Yeah, I got, I was late to the Twitter game, like super late, and like I don't know, I just I never got into it, so I'm I'm fully ready for Twitter to collapse and just move on to Threads. <laughs> yeah. yeah, very curious to see. I mean, God, what a hilarious thing! Like to, to drop drop a duplicate app months before the fight. Zuckerberg yeah. tro- trolling Musk so hard that is. I really oh, hope the fight. Dude, that is insane. Are they gonna I hope- fight? Yeah, they're like, like literally they're supposed to. Fight. I thought it was a meme. No, I, that's I, a, oh no, that's real. I thought it was like an onion article, honestly. No, no, it's like it's, it sounds insane, but Dana White is like orchestrating yeah. this thing and like talking to both of them, and they said oh. like, yeah, we're down for a fight, which is like, that's... I mean, who knows if it'll actually happen? But think about it, like Dude. that fight would raise so much money for charity. That would raise so like, much. Probably be the biggest fight ever. If they donate to charity, I doubt they. <laughs> I don't know. Like, so, I think that's the. Like, it's like it's like it's like a four charity. Yeah, they oh, say that, yeah. but you know somebody's making money. Like, okay. <laughs> you know someone's gonna pocket something. They're charity. They're illegal side bets on themselves. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Who do you think? Who do you? All right. Who are you taking? Zuck or Musk in Zuck the uh, the battle royale? I also think Zuck would. Zuckerberg Zuck Zuck actually is a good, trained fighter. He like trains. Yeah. Right. His uh, jujitsu videos. He like is a competition fighter. <laughs> right. Right. Hilarious. See, like that's my that's my knee jerk reaction too is to take Zuck because he's actually trained. But like Musk has like this like weirdo energy. Like I feel like he has like some yeah, kind of like gorilla like... strength that like we don't. Yeah. He might just kill Zuckerberg. That's the only issue. Yeah. He has, like <laughs> as a secret gadget. <laughs> yeah, or like cyborg. Or something. He's like, like the new Tesla laser. He gets and close it, like, enough, like right. That. That's the thing. Calm. Zuck would put like lasers in his like body or something he would, he would implant something to like something armor or, or something. Imagine <laughs> you know? fight like you know you bring knives and flamethrowers and shit you know right musk would win musk would win yeah it's a different like you gotta think a different ball game here you know right yeah, yeah. Th- if this is in a cage 
Zuck, if this is a, in a fucking meta universe, yeah. I might go to Musk. <laughs> Insane. Uh, wow. Cool. All right, guys. Well, I know you got to run. I know you got shit to do. Thanks again for hanging out and chatting with me, man. I, I can't wait to hear the new record and the full new song when it drops. Uh, what was it? August 12th is the release date? August 2nd. Second, second. I was close. There's two in there. I was close. When is this dropping? <laughs> Will it drop before that? Uh, so I was going to drop it on Wednesday, but I can wait if you guys want, or we can uh, no, do it I, whenever. I would have uh, said to pre-save the song. Pre-save Beautiful Waste on August 2nd if you are pre-save. listening. Pre-save. Uh, I'll put a, if, you're, if you're watching right now, there's a link in the description. You can click that and uh, <laughs> pre-save. And, oh, yeah. Pre-save want- your nuts off. <laughs> I also just want to say thank you for your support for us. Oh, like, dude, yeah. Well, yeah, of course. We all fuck with you very much. We, we watch your videos oh, since forever. inception. So. Oh, do you really? No, oh, yeah. come on. You make me blush and shit. Yeah. <laughs> we all be like, we're always watching them. Yeah. Oh, you guys are just fluffing my, my marbles over here. I like it. We are professional fluffers, too. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, we will definitely do this again soon, and hopefully next time you're in Cleveland, we can uh, get face-to-face. Yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah, brother. Cool. Peace, guys.